Oh, what's up, Cyberspace? Welcome to Zero Style. I'm your host, Zero, the Cyberspace Hero, here to show you the EDC junk I've got in my pouch this week. We've got the brand new Data Crew Small Fry in camo. In this pouch, we've got a very sweet micarta and copper patina squad aesthetic going on here, and I'm just hyped to show it to you. I've also got the nerdy selection of patches right here, stuff I probably would have rocked when I was 19 years old. But that being said, we're gonna have some fun today. You ready? Let's just dive right in. This week we got that new new from Data Crew. This is the small fry pouch in the camo aesthetic. Notice the little Data Crew branding here on the front, zipper on one side, zipper on the back side, full web field on the lower half filled with Ranger eye patches. From Data Crew themselves, we've got their little beanie skull in red. Carl, a mood rod! And the Dead Kennedys, I mean the Data Kids logo. From Pythonix, we've got the matching invader er. Down here, the speech bubble we got going from the skull is the RE Club, gotta catch them all. The Shred Dash One collab, Broken Nolly, and then over here, a sweet little Chinese food box, tentacle hentai action from my friends over at Inky EDC to complete the aesthetic patch setup for this pouch this week. Now, like I said, there's a zipper on both sides of this pouch, and they don't connect. So you can have gear on one side, gear on the other side, and it's not going to touch each other. I've got this thing divided into halves, basically, where one pocket has stuff in the lower half, and then the other pocket has stuff in the other half. It keeps it nice and slim, also keeps your stuff from moving around so much. So in the main pocket here on the front, we're gonna start off with my new flashlight. From Rovivon, this is the A9CU, the copper edition of the A9. This one is equipped with the Nichia 219C LEDs. That is plus 90 CRI compared to the Cree version. Gives it more of a natural true color to the things. I care more about the max lumen output. And this one is about 450 lumens. I think that is just about my sweet spot when it comes to when you're doing real close up floody stuff with the turbo like looking under a couch for toys for kids. Uh, that is a very common activity for me using a flashlight. Right here on the back, you can see a little knurled copper bead by my buddy over at Butterfield Machine Company. Just a very nice, simple, handmade piece of copper. I've actually forced a patina on this myself. I plan to do the same on the flashlight in an upcoming video. Now the big downside to this version versus my other is this is micro USB, not USB-C. And you know what? I'm gonna use an adapter because I don't care. It's smaller than the Titanium Edition, but it weighs a little bit more. Copper. I definitely like them both. They have pros and cons. USB-C, titanium, super lightweight, it's bright, but the aesthetics of a copper flashlight, if you watch this channel, you know that copper is just my jam. I love the patina metals. I love the way that they start to change and look their own unique, distinct way. Whether you force that patina or just let it happen on its own, it continues to happen once you force that patina and becomes this very unique art piece. So yeah, I've got a brand new keychain sized copper flashlight flashlight this week. Also, somewhere deep here in the bowels of this pouch is something I've been wanting to talk about. This is the Savivi Lumi, designed by Justin Lindquist and obviously made by Savivi. It's got a very deep carry pocket clip on this guy. It has some beautiful burlap micarta scales on it, and you'll notice there's not really any deployment spot except for right here. This is what's called an OTF front flipper. The front flipper is the part that comes out the front of the knife, not the blade itself. Got a really slicey clip point on this knife that comes to almost like a spear point there at the tip. Some very nice, I think this is acid etching on this blade right here, not DLC. Super nice. It is not drop shotty. You can force it to drop shot like I just did. But what this knife is all about is the weird front flipper mechanism. It's really unique and it's different than any other front flipper that I've ever messed with. Now, you know that I'm a big fan of front flippers and you've watched me misfire three or four times while I've been doing this little demo here. It's because this is not the easiest thing to get a good purchase on. It is the tiniest little bit of jimping right here on the front. You gotta have your grip just right and 
Flick that and deploy the knife. On the inside here, a little bit of minor skeletalization and then just a nice thin liner lock. This whole knife is very thin and very compact. It looks very gentlemanly. It is unassuming until the knife blade comes out and you're like, holy crap, that is a, that's a pretty big blade. For me, in my young days in Ohio, this would just barely be legal with the palm technique. If you know me and my channel, I really dig small knives. I really dig front flippers. I really dig micarta. I really dig Justin Lindquist designs. So this thing here seemed like the perfect pick for me. I really wanted to get the Baby Barlow. Have you seen that? Check it out. It is a neo-traditional knife with one of these OTF front flippers. It was the first time I'd ever seen that design and I was really infatuated with it until I saw the price tag. And I kind of figured that's a little out of my range and I probably will never get one of those. Then Justin worked with Civivi and released this. And I was like, oh, I can check out that unique front flipper design, but not spend like 250 bucks or 300 bucks, depending on which model you get. I don't love this knife. I'll be completely honest. I normally only feature gear that I really enjoy on this channel, but I'm featuring this for a couple reasons. One, I don't hate it. Like it works well but it's difficult to deploy. You've already spent so much time reaching into your pocket, pulling out the pouch, reaching in and getting the knife out. You wanna just be able to effortlessly deploy it first try. While I just did it now, it's not 100%. I don't get it every single time. And I'm a real front flipper fan and I want to love this knife and I've been playing with it a lot, but it's just not it's not consistent in me being able to deploy it 100% of the time unless I use two hands. Who wants to do that? Come on. I think that this knife is a lot of fun. This could be a decent tactical knife. It has a really nice cool shape to it. The grind is good. It's on bearings even though it's not drop shutty and I've tried to adjust it a number of times. But it's a fun knife and I enjoy it and I've already bought it and I have a YouTube channel where I feature EDC gear. This fits the theme. So it's in the pouch. Whether I love it or think it's okay, in this case, I think it's okay. Here it is. Now, things about this knife that I don't like beside that. One of the things that I didn't notice was that there's no lanyard hole on this thing. This right here is a screw that goes through here to make this backstop here, which you could wrap a lanyard around the backstop and make yourself one, but I tried it and it even if you use like 550 or below, it still interferes just at the bottom when it's pulled the wrong direction. So no lanyard on here. So that was another bummer. And the final thing that I don't absolutely love about this knife is how big it is. I know this is a small knife, but for me, this is like the absolute max of how big I wanna go. Most knives I want to have are smaller than this and more compact. So. Not the, the best, but I knew that going into this purchase. I looked at the specs and saw that even though I missed the lanyard a whole bit. Things I can say that are positive about this knife. Uh, the clip is reversible. You can put it on either side. You can absolutely front flick this thing left-handed. There's nothing that's stopping you from using this thing amb ambidextrously either way. And it's a beautiful design. I love the burlap on the scales. I think it looks cool. The black on black on black, all of the liners, all of the hardware, all of everything, like it's put together really well. But just, not 100% for me. It's fun. It's a unique knife that I'm happy to have in my collection. Like I said, I love Justin Lindquist design knives, so I think it's it's fitting to sit next to my Feist in the drawer. And it's gonna get some pocket time. I've been using it, I've been testing it, I've been wanting to get into using this knife. It's tricky left-handed, but you can do it. And the lockup is great. Once you, you push it, like, if you get it all the way here to the edge and just wait for that, I mean, it's solid. It's a great knife in that respect. The Civivi Lumi by Justin Lindquist Knives. Little OTF front flipper. So like I said on the front pocket, we've got the knife, the flashlight tucked down here. So here on the back, we've got our gear right up top. Let's start with a piece 
That is, should be no surprise. This is the tri-metal Lautier Mechanic in brass, copper, and zirconium. This is a little tactile worry ring stone kind of thing that has magnets and ball bearings inside of it. It allows you to spin it like this, click it on your finger, and you know, get out your anxiety and nervous energy with a fidget toy. I think fidget toys are really fun to play with. I have a lot of just energy and it's hard to not do something with my hands. I used to bite my nails and tap my feet all the time. Now I just channel that energy into a fidget toy. Uh, some are quieter than others, but this one has a little bit of sound to it. This thing is absolutely ambidextrous. You can use it on multiple hands, multiple fingers, and it works the same way. The idea here is you've got a rotating ring with ball bearings on the inside, and then on the outside you've got a two-piece shell that goes around the edge. You can have up to eight magnets inside of it. I personally have two in mine on polar opposite ends. It gives it that nice sort of middle ground between tactility and that free spin. If you have no magnets in this thing and spin it, it just goes and goes and goes put a magnet or two more in there, the difficulty in spinning increases until finally if you put all eight magnets in there, you almost can't spin it, but it really chunk, 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 chunks into place as you move it. And the tactility is nice. I heard this from Dean at Lauti himself. But I heard if you glue the magnets into this thing, it actually is silent. So maybe that's something I should try now that I know that I really enjoy the two magnet setup because I have two of these. But this is a really fun fidget toy that I just I can't get over. It's, I featured it in a couple videos in a row. Just, I like it so much and I really enjoy it. Now, I've said before that Lauti does not have a website, but that is no longer true. Lauti.com, L-A-U-T-I-E.com, now offers their fidget tools for sale all of the time. Not in drop style, like you could just go there right now and buy them. I think that's pretty amazing. I'm glad they finally figured out whatever they needed to about fulfillment. I don't know how much stock they have or how often they're going to restock, but as of right now of recording this, there are lots of products for sale in there and older stuff too, not just new stuff. So if you wanna pick up some Lauti stuff, go check their new website out. So this guy hangs out right here, in the top front section next to another fidget tool. This is a leather fidget slider from my buddy over at Caribre Leather. This is the three by three edition. You can see where those six magnets are in bed here. Now, if you just go like this, there's almost no sound whatsoever. This is Shell Cordorvan leather, which I've been told is in made in super expensive shoes, and it is one of the most premium types of leather out there. But this dude makes this in all different kinds of leather. You can buy what he has on his SD shop or send him a message on Instagram and say, hey, I wanna get a custom commission, and he'll make it in whatever color he has available to you the way you want it. I've seen some really cool ones with black leather with some colored stitching on the edges, but I wanted to go with like an orange stitch that really just matched this leather. Got some nice looking edges right here on the sides. Very cool look to it. And it is just very satisfying. Now, these are two uh, basically identical pieces that just magnetize together. So you can absolutely do this thing with either hand, left-handed, right-handed, however you feel more comfortable, this thing will help you ease your anxiety. Now I said it's quiet, but it doesn't have to be. There's a lot of moves that you can do with this thing where you can slap them together and make a lot of noise. But generally speaking, this is one of my most quiet fidget toys and I really enjoy it. The leather smell, this leather just smells so good. Whew. And you know, it makes the other gear in your pouch sort of smell like that and your hands. It's very cool. I definitely enjoy it and it's handmade. This is a custom piece of fidget toy action that you can have for at minimum 40 bucks. And I think that is very affordable for the quality of a handmade item like this. And the shipping time is really fast too. It's an American maker. He makes them really fast. It's a side hustle for him, but he's really into doing this. So so shout out to Caribre Leather. When I first found out about this, uh, I messaged him on Instagram and asked him if he did customs because I kind of liked one that he had on there that was sold out. And he said, I will just send it to you. But yeah, he sent this out to me with no uh, fees. I didn't pay for it, but I wanted to make sure that Jens got to check out a really, 
really unique and cool leather fidget toy. I've been doing this move where you push it up, push it to the side, and then flip it around in your hand. I'm doing this left-handed, by the way, and I'm right-handed, so. But I really dig pressing this all the way up to the top and then wrapping it back around the side again. I think left-handed is a little tricky for me. It's just very satisfying to push up and down endlessly over and over again. And because they're completely detached, you really can do whatever kind of fidget flows you want. If you mess up, you just, you know, pick them up and put them back together. There they are. Just a very nice little piece of leather action for this thematic copper, micarta, and leather patina squad carry. This guy goes here on the front, top section of the pouch, up here separated from the other stuff in the back half. Now, on the lower part of this, I actually have been keeping my cards there. An ID and old debit card normally, but today for this video, we've got a Blockbuster card and an exchange card. But those things just slide right here down in the front perfectly. They're super easy to get in and out of your pocket. You just throw this thing right in your front pocket. And it is just an awesome little pouch. I really dig the small fry. I actually like it more than the Wada slider because of how I carry. It's so thin and minimal. It's small. Uh, I carry less crap in it because if I have a bigger pouch, I'm gonna put more junk in it. And I really enjoy combining my EDC organizer and my wallet into one thing. And I think that this just makes sense. I also like the two section divider where you put your knife in one side and your cards in the other. So when you go to the gas station to pull out your credit card, they don't see your knife and freak out if you live in a place like that. It's very nicely done. This thing's got YKK zips on it. Very nice quality, but they're tiny. So if you plan to replace the zipper pulls on this, you're gonna need micro cord to fit them in there. Just how it is. But yes, the Data Crew Small Fry pouch is one of my favorite EDC pouches. Now these just dropped, but they're gonna get restocked real soon. And when they do, make sure you use my discount code. XERO15 gets you 15% off the entire datacrewla.com store. Buy a hundred patches, three pins, a hoodie, and then put it into your cart and get 15% off everything. I get no kickbacks involved in this. This is just a little thank you from Data Crew and me for you being here on my channel and supporting me. I appreciate you very much. I just poked myself in the eye. Not in the pouch, but also with me this week, I've got a Hank, because I've always got a Hank with me. This is a cool one. That's a collab between Awesome Hank's brand and Barbarian Brawny, a friend of mine on Instagram. It's a cool pirate treasure map Hank. It's microfiber on the back with this cool little eyelet that has a lanyard bead on it. I think that's designed for you to be able to pull it out of your pocket a little bit easier. I personally don't have much trouble with that, but just a cool little addition for a Hank. What are Hanks good for? They're good for cleaning stuff, whether it be knives, screens, phones, tablets, lenses, your face, it doesn't matter. These things are awesome for getting job's done. And I carry two of them with me. The second Hank that I've got on me is an older prototype from Damn Hanks. This is the World Map Hank. Just some cool map and pirate ship action print. This one is not microfiber. It is actually cotton on the back. It is really soft. And this is the perfect kind of Hank to use for snot. It's allergy season. I have two young children and suffer from allergies, so having a hank for snot and having a hank for screens is just the way that I roll. And when you wear cargo pants, you got plenty of room. So hanks, always carry at least one of them on you. I would also be remiss if I didn't mention I've got a champion hoodie on from my dudes over at the Data Crew. This is just a really nice warm hoodie. That's awesome. It's got their logo on it. Very simple, very plain. A little olive action for this camouflaged carry. Well, that is the Pouch Nymph episode for this week. I hope you enjoyed it. I love making these videos. Hey, if you did, give me a like. It's the free social currency here on YouTube. Click my face down here if you want to subscribe to my vlog. Click these boxes appearing on my face as I do this outro if you want to watch more of my videos right now. And if no one has told you today, you are a rad person who deserves love and praise just like everybody else in this world. Get out there today, do something nice, have some fun, and I'll see you in the next one. Later on. Alright, I gotta get back into this zone again.